Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Explore Science. And today we're going to be talking about gyroscopes. This is a gyroscope uh, that you can get online fairly cheaply from most science or hobby stores. Just take a look around. They're very easy to find and not all that expensive. The way it works is uh, there is a flywheel in the middle there on a cage that goes around the outside. Now, uh, when you just hold this, it's just gonna flop right over. It doesn't look like it's special in any way, but today we are talking about something called angular momentum. And angular momentum is what makes gyroscopes do some really cool stuff. When I pull this string, I start the flywheel moving and uh, the flywheel starts spinning. Now, the cool thing about angular momentum is that spin wants to keep staying the same direction it was spinning to begin with. And it will, you can balance a gyroscope so it stands straight up and down. But remember what Sir Isaac Newton said, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. And in this case, the outside force is gravity. So as the flywheel slows down, gravity is trying to pull the gyroscope over. And when that happens, it starts to wobble. We call that wobble precession. This happens with our planet too. The Earth is spinning in space once a day. It's uh, how we define a day is how long it takes to go around one time. However, the sun's gravity is pulling on our planet. So as the Earth spins, it wobbles on its axis. Now, you and I aren't going to notice the difference. This happens once every 26,000 years. It makes a circle in the sky. But the big deal with that is we've only been able to use Polaris as the North Star for the last 500 years. We will only be able to use Polaris as the North Star for another 500 years. And then the wobble is going to carry it away and uh, the North Pole will just be pointing in an empty section of the sky. Now, because this thing is spinning, it can do some really cool things because it wants to stay upright against the spin. As I uh, hold the string like this, we can put it on its side and it will not flop out of the string as it goes around as well. Uh, you'll notice that it is going in a circle. Uh, that's a cute little thing called the right hand rule. The direction that it's turning, curl your fingers in that direction, your thumb will point the direction it will turn. So in this case, it's turning that way, so it goes that way. So you can get a gyroscope like this really cheaply, like I said, online, or you can build a gyroscope out of stuff you probably have around your house. And my partner, Tiffany, is going to tell you about that. Hi, I'm Tiffany Woolbrick here to show you how you can make your own gyroscope at home with items you probably already have. The first thing is a fidget spinner. You'll need a fidget spinner um, and it, they, they normally have these little dust caps on them. So I've, I've just pried mine off okay, to expose the middle ball bearing. Um, you can pop those right back on after you're done if you want to keep using your fidget spinner. I do recommend putting those back. But you want to have that ball bearing open for our gyroscope so, um, so that you can put a stick inside. Uh, really kind of anything that fits. So a pencil, a pen. Uh, I find that paint brushes work pretty well. Uh, and the last thing that you really need is string. I'm a knitter, so I have yarn, but any string uh, will do as long as it's not too, too stretchy. It should work just fine. Um, optionally, I would say just a couple pieces of tape or some rubber bands to put around um, your fidget spinner so it doesn't slide. Um, could, could maybe make it a little bit better, but again, that's optional. That's all you're going to need for your gyroscope. So this is mine all put together. Okay, I have, the, I have this fidget spinner, a paintbrush, and so one end of my string is tied to my paintbrush, and the other end, um, 
For this, you kind of need a friend. You need three hands. So you can either find a friend to hold the other side of your string, or you can do what I did and tie it to a, a hanger or anything that it can hang off of. Okay, so the other end uh, of my gyroscope is tied to a hanger. I'm going to hang it up on my light here. And now we have a gyroscope. Okay, you can see that our paintbrush is pointing down when we just let it rest it's pointing down why down why not any other direction this is because of gravity right gravity is the force that keep that's pulling us down and keeping us on the ground so that we're not floating off into space and um, that's what's happening to that's what the paintbrush is experiencing as well it's experiencing gravity pulling it down now, when we introduce a spin, like with the fidget spinner, we're introducing something called angular momentum. And suddenly we have two forces that are, that are competing with one another. Okay, we have a force pointing this way and a force gravity pointing this way. So what do you think is gonna happen? If we introduce this spin and introduce angular momentum, our, uh, I need to go a little faster. Our paintbrush does not automatically fall down anymore. Isn't this neat? So this is called gyroscopic precession. We see this in uh, nature a lot. In fact, this happens with our planet Earth. Uh, and it's really, really fun. I hope that you uh, make this experiment with it. See how it changes when you move your yarn around, um, when you do different different uh, speeds with your spins or different spin directions. Just uh, experiment with it and have fun. Thank you for joining me.